Good morning folks, it's Sonia with 2x2 Legoto and the video I want to do today is about puppies and how to take puppies home. It's actually the top 10 things you need to know before taking your puppy home. Um, number one, remember they are just babies. At the point that we send puppies home between 10 and 12 weeks old unless you opt for extra board to train, their life on the planet can be measured in days. Uh, 10 to 12 week old puppies um, are impressionable and young and little and while our puppies go home in a um, with an adventuresome fun-loving bomb-proof attitude they're still just babies all right number two when in doubt take them out um, we call this hyper scheduling here. That means that you're taking dogs out um, when you first take them home, sometimes every 30 minutes. You'll establish patterns, but when in doubt, take them out. And the things you need to know about taking them potty when they wake up from a nap, after they have eaten, um, after they have woken up from their nighttime sleep, after they drink water. Um, after they have played hard, exercised, gone on a walk, um, switched rooms, had a training session, um, been playing with a toy for a long period of time, five minutes or more, um, they need to go out to potty. Um, times um, between activities, we call those transitions, and they need to go potty. So when in doubt, take them out. Number three, be patient. This kind of goes back to number one, which is they're just babies. Um, but you need to be patient. You need to um, have a lot of stamina, a lot of patience, and don't take it out on the puppy. Don't take your frustration out on the puppy. Don't take your anxiety out on the puppy. That's anthropomorphizing. All right, number four don't encourage cute behavior so cute behavior where they're dancing around putting their paws on you when they're a little bitty isn't going to be so cute when they're 30 pounds um, when they're 30 pounds cute behavior such as um, running off with your shoe or running away from you like they're playing hide and seek or catch me if you can um, um, chewing on your hands is not cute. Chewing on your clothing when they've got little bitty teeny puppy teeth is not cute because guess what? Those are going to be replaced by adult teeth and they'll be chewing on you with their adult teeth. It's just not cute. So we say start as you mean to go and go as you mean to start. So if you don't want your dog on the couch or you don't want them jumping on you or you don't want them stealing your clothing or shoes or chewing on you or jumping on you, then don't encourage that. And by encouraging that, you are positively reinforcing a negative behavior. So one of the mistakes I see people make with regard to that is a puppy jumps up on you. They're right only at your knee at that point, little bitty. And so you reach down and you pet the puppy after they have jumped on you or even with their feet still on you. Guess what? You're positively reinforcing that behavior. We don't pet puppies unless they're sitting, which is also called a mand, M-A-N-D. All right, number five, crate training is not cruel. Puppies may pitch a wild fit or whine or carry on. Um, that does not mean they don't like the crate. That does not mean that the crate is cruel. That does not mean that they think you're being cruel or ignoring them or being... Um, um, torturous, although some of them can act like it, all it means is that they want to be out with you. It's the same thing as if you had children, your one-year-old pitching a fit to go to bed. Well, guess what? We know it's bedtime. We know as an adult, you need your sleep. Left to their own defenses, toddlers would stay up until they fell over, and then they're grumpy. Same thing with puppies. Crate training is not cruel. If done correctly, and we give lots and lots of instruction in this in our online training course, and there's tons of material out there that shows that crate training isn't cruel. The crate isn't cruel. It keeps your puppy safe. It keeps your adult dog safe. Um, it's a place to put them when they need to be confined at the vet office, at the groomer, 
at the trainer at your home when you've got guests over or the repairman or or whatever maybe there's an emergency and they have to be um, contained not crate training your puppy is actually the cruelty here because they don't have their safe cave space so I've had a few clients not crate train and completely regret it all right number six be consistent the thing about dogs is that they're consistent. They don't know any other way to behave. Humans, however, we try to mimic, we try to um, utilize dog behavior or canine speak, but we're not consistent about it. And I just want to encourage you to try to be consistent. If you wake up every day of the week at 6.30 in the morning, but Saturday morning you want to sleep in till 10.00, puppy isn't going to go for that. So consider those things. Consider, can you be consistent with your lifestyle, with puppy exercise, with meal times and nap times, and with training? The inconsistency with training is the biggest frustration roadblock for puppies and their training. Number seven, socialization. Socialization is not spending time around the family um, or in your even in your neighborhood. Um, socialization is safe exposure to all kinds of people, interactions, and spaces. So and noises, I'll add that. So that safe exposure needs to be done early on. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is take a puppy home and think that they can home train their puppy. It is such a disservice. You create anxiety you're, and you're pre, predetermining to create this anxiety because when you have to take your dog somewhere, like to the vet or the groomer, or let's say there's an emergency and you have to um, travel to a hotel or something to that effect, um, your dog is then ha has anxiety. They're nervous. They don't, they don't understand. Whereas if they've been exposed to this by safe exposure means, um, they will, um, be able to handle it in stride and be very adaptable. When we send puppies home, they are highly adaptable. They've been a lot of places. They've seen a lot of things. They've done a lot of things. They've been safely exposed to all kinds of things. Tractors, cars, um, farm animals, um, loud noises, um, farm equipment, lawnmowers, um, dishwashers, washing machines, hair dryers, um, grooming equipment, and it all helps that socialization. Uh, socialization is not holding puppies and carrying them around. It is not, um, it is not staying at home. And this is one of the reasons too, why we require a puppy class and a basic obedience class, because we know that that will be adequate for the socialization needs of puppies that we send home. All right, number eight, let them sleep. Puppies need 12 to 16 hours a day of sleep through about eight to nine months of age. That's a lot of sleep. So when we send our puppies home, they have a schedule, a puppy schedule, and they have a minimum of two, two to three hour naps. And sometimes there's even a third nap in the afternoon. And so that's a lot of sleep for puppy and they need it puppies that don't get adequate sleep either at night and during the day with their naps are oftentimes grumpy um, hyper um, they're overreactive so they can't focus they can't settle down um, and they don't listen also puppies that don't get adequate naps at night uh, during the day will have difficulty settling at night. So if you've taken a puppy home, you know, 10 to 12 weeks from us and puppy is being a screecher howler monkey at night, check your daytime naps. And I bet you're either letting puppy fall asleep where they drop or you're not organizing the naps according to the schedule. Um, all right. Number nine. 
cannot believe it just did this. Unbelievable. Maybe it didn't do it. My screen went black. I'm so technologically challenged. I thought I was going to have to start the whole video over. Anyway, all right, so number nine. Love them, but don't anthropomorphize them. Anthropomorphizing is a big word. It's one of my favorite words. That means assigning human traits, feelings, and behaviors to animals. In this instance, um, people assign these feelings to dogs. And I'll give you, I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, one is, uh, oh, they don't like their crate. So you're anthropomorphized. You've decided that they don't like their crate. Well, it's not that they don't like their crate. Oh, guys. That's hilarious. My puppies. Well, actually, one of them's not a puppy. It's my dog, my son's Belgian Malingator, Belgian Malinois, <sighs> getting into trouble behind me. Sorry for the interruption. Anyway, so back to anthropomorphizing. So you've decided that because puppy is fussing and whining, they don't like their crate. So you can't take it anymore, so you let puppy out at peak level of fit pitching, fussing, and whining. Well, what you've done with that anthropomorphization right there is positively reinforce the behavior. The behavior that they employed was fussing, fit pitching, and whining to get out of their crate. So now you've created a bit of a monster because you thought that they didn't like their crate. When in fact, it's not that they don't like their crate. They're learning to love it and they just need human guidance on how to do that. And what they want is just to be out of the crate. It's not that they don't like the crate. You'll find with consistency, they'll actually go in the crate on their own um, to nap and hang out. Uh, so another anthropomorphizing moment could be um, with regard to their food. Uh, so let's say puppy finishes their entire cup of food in about two seconds flat and you think oh, they're hungry they're more hungry so you give them more food well now you're creating obesity and challenging um, metabolic issues by overfeeding them but the anthropomorphization um, looked at a behavior and determined how the, um, the human would feel if they were doing the same behavior so if I'm hungry, I tend, I do tend to eat my food faster. Oh, I'm really hungry. Um, when dogs are eating their food faster, it just means they want it done and out of the way or that they like their food and they're excited to eat it. Nothing else involved. Um, so carefully monitor your dog's behavior patterns. Another, and this is a big one, another anthropomorphizing moment is when there's thunderstorms or gunfire or, or the big one fireworks. And we're, it's July 4th and we're sitting with puppy outside or indoors and that starts going off and immediately, um, well, first of all, you've probably been giving off some pheromones, some anxiety pheromones in anticipation of your dog's behavior. And, um, truth be told, you need to calm down like business as usual, but let's say you anthropomorphized and thought, Oh, poor puppy's going to be scared of this. Well, are you scared of it? Maybe you are, or maybe you're not either way. Don't judge what the dog is going to, how the dog is going to think or react just business as usual. And don't pet a dog while they're shaking or seem to be frightened or slightly anxious. You're creating a monster that is positively reinforcing that behavior. They attach that, um, that extra affection with, uh, well, they'll, they'll trauma bond over it. And so they think, oh, I'm supposed to act this way when fireworks go off. I'm supposed to shake and shiver and, 
And if you just left them alone during any event like that, they would work through it. If you don't behave in an anxious way, but likely you already were because you had anticipatory anxiety about how your dog was going to react. Listen, we send bomb-proof puppies home. So no need to worry about that stuff. 90% of this is owner-caused. All right. And I have an anthropomorphization video if you'd like to watch that too. Number 10, and this is um, something that we start here right away, um, documenting your puppy's life. Any, anybody who wants puppy pictures, um, newborn pictures, um, they get them. We send them out. Um, document your puppy's life. And because puppyhood is such a short period of time, um, literally six to nine months of their life, and it's gone in the blink of an eye. And some dogs mature faster, um, especially the ones whose parents, um, whose owners, sorry, whose doggy owners um, are the most um, involved in training, who do all the necessary training. Puppies mature pretty quickly. Um, owners who tend to skip out on that or not be consistent will have um, puppyhood last a little longer. So... In, not in a good way. All right, so document your puppy's life. All right, let's start from the top. Number one, remember they're just babies. Number two, when in doubt, take them out. Number three, be patient. Number four, don't encourage cute behavior. Number five, crate training is not cruel. Number six, be consistent. Number seven, socialize, socialize, socialize. Don't stay at home. Number eight, let them sleep. We said 10, uh, excuse me, 12 to 16 hours a day. Number nine, love them, but don't anthropomorphize them. And number 10, document your puppy's life. Um, I adapted this from um, another page that I saw and thought that it would be great to share with my clients. All right, remember to like um, this um, comment and um, subscribe to our page and to our YouTube channel. Thanks, bye.